Good morning again. Good morning. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone of the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 The battle is not yours. You know, one song was talking about we're in a war. <laughs> and then you got to remember, even though you're in the war, the battle is not yours. Amen. The battle is the Lord's. It, but the song said he uses you. You know, sometimes we get in battles. And some, some of us, some matter of fact, some of us right now in a battle. But we forget about who the battle it is. Amen. So you're trying to fight the devil, and you got to understand one thing. You will never win. You know, when Satan comes upon you, you you never win because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. You, you can't defeat Satan by yourself. You have got to have the Lord on your side because the battle is his. So remember that next time, you know, you're in, you in a fight or you're getting ready to get into a fight or a fight is coming your way. Just like them storms, huh? The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. July 16, 2017, the day you will not see you again. It's been, a, it's been a great, great, great retirement so far. Amen. I sometimes I don't know what to do. Uh, I've, I've even been thinking about going to work. Nah. <laughs> But it's, it's been good, it's good to see everybody, it's good to see your faces again. Because you know, I know it's summertime, everybody doing their thing, you know, but sometimes we gotta remember who's in charge. Amen. Who gives us, who gives us, who gives us what we have. Amen. And gives us the ability to do the things we do. So no, no matter what we do, let's not forget who is in charge, who has total control. Our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. You know, he's always with you, no matter what. Even in your roughest of times, Jesus is right there with you. You know, so, have you ever been on a trip and forgot your luggage? No, have right? Am I right? You're right. When you when you when you when you're going on a trip, you, you make sure you pack. Right. Right? Right. You got your luggage. You don't never forget it. Now you might forget some things, but you don't forget your luggage. Sometimes you need to forget the luggage because you know sometimes that, that luggage weighing you down. Mm. Sometimes you need to just you know, go get the toothbrush and just leave the luggage, pack it up and leave it. Yeah, I'll get that on the way home. <laughs> sometimes things just hold you down and hold you back. And some things you just got to let go. It's time to get some new luggage. Yes, Lord. <laughs> and leave that old luggage alone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, I know how we do it all while then. Mrs. Smith, an elderly woman, went into the doctor's office. When the doctor asked why she was there, she replied, I'd like to have some birth control pills. Now, quite surprised, the doctor thought for a minute, and then he said, Excuse me, Mr. Smith, but you're 75 years old. What possible use could you have for birth control pills? The woman responded, they helped me sleep better. <laughs> the doctor thought some more and he continued. He said, how in the world do birth controls help you sleep? The woman said, 
I put them in my granddaughter's orange juice, and I sleep better at night. <laughs> Amen. Say it like you mean. This is my God. This is my God. The, the word of God, God in whom I would trust. trust. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Grace and Heavenly Father, Father, we just glorify you on this day, God. We give you honor, praise. And Lord, we just want to just, we want you to just lift us up right now in the name of Jesus. Father, speak with my mouth. Speak with my mind. Let me stand behind the cross. Let me decrease, Lord, as you increase in me. Holy Spirit, arise and awaken. And speak to the people of God. These are no things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. If you would turn your Bibles to the book of Joshua. Joshua. In the Old Testament. Genesis. Exodus. Leviticus. Numbers. Deuteronomy. And Joshua. Joshua chapter 24. Starting at verse 14. Joshua 24, going to verse 14. Take note, church. Joshua 24, starting at verse 14. the NIV. Joshua 24, chapter, I mean chapter 24, verses 14. Starting at 14. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of God. This is coming to the end, about the end of, of Joshua's life. And at the end of Joshua's life, he was challenging the children of Israel to be faithful to their God. And see, I think that there's a word coming today, it, it should be across this, this great world of ours, that it's time for people to start challenging people, the people of God, to start being faithful to their God. We're faithful to all kind of gods. Amen. And they need to make, they need to make up their minds and decide whom they was going to serve. The Israelites did. Now, this morning I want to talk to you all about make up your mind. Because who are you going to serve? Who do you choose to serve? We, there, there's so many, we got so many gods, people don't realize who their gods are that they serve. Because they take control of your lives. How about, can, can money be a god? Mm -hmm. Can alcohol be a god? Mm -hmm. Can drugs be a god? Mm -hmm. Can hate be a god? Mm -hmm. See, we serve so many gods and we don't even realize it. And he's telling us to be faithful to our God. He's challenging us today to make up your mind. It's time for you all to make a decision and choose who you're going to serve. We've been serving Satan for a long time. And, you know, we, we, you know sometimes you know, people don't like to hear it about them serving Satan because they know, like, they, you, know, how you know I'm serving Satan. Well, you know what? We all serve him. I serve him myself. You know, he come, he come to me and he gets served. We all have a taste of Satan every now and then. But who are we going to serve on this day? Who do we choose to serve? It's time for us to make decisions in our lives on, you know, how are we going to serve the Lord? What, what, what can you do for the Lord? Because the Lord has done so much for you. Amen? Amen. When has God not done anything for you? I mean, 
outside of everything you have, all your materialistic things, who gave you life this morning? Who, who, who gave you the ability to walk, to see, to talk, to smell, to see, to hear? If it had not been for the Lord, you wouldn't have these things today. Simple things that we take for granted. How about water? You know, that's something, that's something sometimes we don't drink. Because we always need some flavor. Huh? So we go get a Pepsi, or orange, or a grape, and don't leave out them best fruit punches. All the stuff that we don't need in our body, we put in our bodies. How many of you have to know that your body is really made of water? Your body needs water. But we'll serve this. This, Pepsi, Coke, you name them, they they done made they billionaires off of our money. Yeah. Amen. Because we've been we've been programmed that it's good. Yes. It's refreshing. Right? Amen. When God serves you, his word is good. It's refreshing. But we don't drink it. See, we 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 won't drink this. But get one of these, we'll tear it up. You gotta make up your mind who you're gonna serve this morning. Point number one. In verse 14, it, it, it's someone it's a preferred choice. Of course, the preferred and best choice was to fear the Lord. That was, that was your best choice, to fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. All the other gods were to be put away. What did he tell us in the commandments? Serve no other God before him. Am I right or wrong? Amen. So why do we continue to put gods before God? Boy, I don't know, that, 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 that big thing, that, 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 that M-O-N-E-Y. That, that one right there, that's just, that's just the God of all gods for people. You know, like we, we act like we can't do without it. Seriously, think about it. When people broke, they act like the world coming to an end. Can't go nowhere, can't do nothing. Kids just got to buy all that, they, they just taking all my money. Should have had all them kids. <laughs> Should talk about that if we start having our own kids. Oh yeah, they cost. Money. We let money just drive us. Like it like it's our preferred choice. How can you have money or any other guy before him instead of fearing the Lord? How, how many people today really fear the Lord? You can there's, there's, there's numerous people, you can walk up and down the street and they, and they, they don't, you can ask them, they'll tell you, they'll, they'll tell you right now, they don't fear the Lord. <laughs> and they don't fear the Lord because they don't know the Lord. Just like the Israelites. See, that's that, that what I understand about the Israelites. The Israelites knew God. Yet they didn't fear God. This is why they were so hard-headed and disobedient. Just like us. We hard-headed and disobedient. What is, what is God going to have to do to get our attention like he did the Israelites? I pray to God he don't do what he did to the Israelites. To us. We could, we could take it. We could. We could take it. Think about it. Let somebody come in and, 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 and take over our land. Look at your preferred choices, you all. But I think the best choice you can ever make is to fear the Lord and serve Him sincerely. See, a lot of people serve God, but there's no sincerity to it. 
A lot of people just faking the funk. Because it looks good. It, lo it makes them look good in the eyes of others. In reality, they really could care less. But God knows. Amen. Amen. Point number two, possible alternatives. And in verse 15, there were other gods that could be worshipped, including the gods of Egypt and the gods of the Amorites. But the God of Israel was superior to these gods that really weren't gods at all. Money, alcohol, like we said, drug. Those, those are not, they're really not gods. We, 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 we make them our God. Don't you know that you have a choice? Of who you're going to serve? I, I, you know, we, 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 some of us say, I just don't understand why, how, they, how, they, how, they, how they get high and put that stuff all up their nose and shoot that stuff in their arms. Got caught up. Be thankful that you never got caught up. And those that have got caught up, thank God that you clean. Amen. Amen. You know, that's a big thing that, 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 that those that are, that are, that are clean, and, and as they go through the years and stay clean, that truly is a great accomplishment, you all. It really is. Because I think, you know, those of us that, 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 that are sober, you have no idea how hard it is to go day to day without it and, and then, then be around it. <laughs> And this is why, you know, when, when you're clean, you should be around clean people. Amen. Amen. Because if you, let me tell you something, if you clean and you're going to still go around and know everybody getting high, <laughs> sooner or later, you're going to be like the <laughs> Sooner or later, you're going to slide. You're going you're gonna to take a hit. And you have to start all over. But you got alternatives. It is still not wise or logical to choose alternatives to the true and living God. But people do it all the time, don't they? Yeah. People are always choosing others over God. I, I, for the life of me, I, that's something I'm, I don't think I'm going to ever understand why. But people are people. And people will always do what people want to do. Amen. You can always give people the word. And teach people the word. Don't necessarily always mean that people are going to follow the word. But everybody has alternatives. And everybody has choices that they have to make. I think it's time now that we make up our minds who we're going to serve. Who we're going to follow. Do we choose God? Or do we choose Lucy? It is so easy to follow Lucifer because everything he gives you looks good. Or he whispers in your ear, it sounds good. We serve so many different gods in our, in our day, in, 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 in this age today. Some of us just get caught up with different kinds of things in our lives. And we forget about the alternatives that we do have. Some people are just afraid. Some people think they serve the Lord just by showing up. Mm -hmm. What if God just showed up to your house and just didn't do nothing? What if, what if God knocked on your door one day and you let him in and he said, I'm just here just to watch the TV? <laughs> and you, 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 you thought he showed up to fix your problems. God actually showed up. Oh man, God in my house. Then he gonna sit down and talk about. Then he wanna, he wanna watch sports him. I got problems. I got issues. <laughs> you supposed to help me. 
and you're supposed to serve me. Mm -hmm. What if? What if? You really needed God and he took a time out. <laughs> you know, well, I'm so glad that God don't go on vacation. <laughs> like we do. You know how we take a break from God? And some of us take extended vacations. <laughs> And you know, I'm just so grateful that no matter what we do, he's always there. No matter what choice we make, he's always there. God serves us faithfully. Faithfully. Don't you think it's time for you now to turn around and take your change, your alternative, and start serving him the same way? Faithfully, <laughs> sincerely. With all your heart. Point number three. It's a personal decision. As far as Joshua knows, he led in his family. This was a no-brainer to him. Because he and his family would serve the Lord. That's what Joshua said. As far as me, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. That's a personal decision everybody has to make. You know what I'm saying? I, can't nobody make that decision for you. Well, I can sit here and talk to them blue in the face. But that decision is still yours. I can say, you need to serve the Lord. I don't need to browbeat you and beat you across the head and all that. Tell me tell you what you need to do. I'll just give you a simple word to make up your mind. You can take it and do what you want to do with it. Because the decision is yours. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That, that, that's, that's my motto. And I think that's a model that every 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 male should take. Because that's the head of the household. Mm -hmm. Whether well, people want to realize that or not. You can believe, you can you can pay all the bills and do everything all you want to. But that that's that head is still on that man. In God's eyes. Man needs to start stepping up and being accountable and do what he's supposed to do. See, we got so many we always talk about deadbeat dads, don't we? There's a whole lot of deadbeat husbands too. Deadbeats. Man that just don't want to do anything. But want to leave when it's convenient for him. This is my house. You ain't putting ain't putting nothing in this house. <laughs> You ain't paid no bills. You, 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 don't, you, you don't bring no money in. You just lay, look, you just like a log. You like a log floating down the river doing what? Nothing. But float, that's all you do. And sometimes, you know, you need to take that log and tell it to float on. And float or something. <laughs> Load on. Some of y'all know that song. <laughs> but it's a personal decision, you all, that you have to make in life about who you're going to serve. And I think today is the time for us to make up our minds of whom we will serve. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with you telling, you know, getting your household together and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because if you start serving the Lord as the head, the rest of your household is going to follow but they got to see your sincerity and your faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Because you, if you tit and tatting with it, they're not going to take you seriously. They're not going to take you for real. Serve the Lord. Uh, that, that's, that's all I can tell you this morning. It is for you to just be honest within yourselves and make a personal decision of whom you will serve. Amen. Just like Joshua did. Mm -hmm. You know, Joshua could have done what he wanted to do. He could have just been, he could have done what the rest of the Israelites did. But Joshua was a warrior. 
And he knew how good the Lord has been to him. You think about all the battles that Joshua went through? Yet he came out unscathed and alive? Think about it. It's like Brother Martin was saying earlier about war. If you ever been in a battle, if you ever seen war, and I ain't talking about TV. TV, TV is TV, it's, it's, it's fabricated. But when you, can, when, you, when you smell death and see death on a day, it makes you appreciate life. And when you come back, you so grateful to just get off that plane and kiss the ground because God is so good. And I can tell you for a fact, I wasn't thinking about God as far as, you know, serving him. But when we, when we got to San Francisco and got off that plane, man, every brother that was on that plane was kissing the ground. Because one thing we know, we did not have to go back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Did not have the United States look good to me with all his problems, <laughs> with all his hatred, and then the, the, the part that really gets me sometimes is so many of us that go to war, come back alive, and get killed in their own country over some nothing, some nonsense. And this is why I talk about, you know, me and my husband serve the Lord. Man, God's been too good. And, I, you know, that, that's why I think, Brother Martin, I've, I've always said that the United States should do it to be like Canada. As soon as you turn 18, you're in the military, whether you like it or not. You're doing two, you're doing two three years. Ain't no, ain't no if, ands, or buts. It'll change a whole lot of attitudes and a, a, way, of, a way of living, a way of looking at life. Uh, respecting each other and one another and really be truly grateful for the life that you have. This is what the life that God has given us. And you know, I, 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 you know, I, when I say war, we're in a war right now, okay. spiritual war. Right. And we should be grateful that he protects us. And if you're grateful, then make the choice. But it's a personal decision on whom you're going to serve. Amen. 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 Amen.